Welcome back. We are still on our discussion of unit four, sensation and perception, and moving on to module 17, influences on perception. This is a really short module, so hopefully this will not take too long to get through. What this module is about is really thinking about how do our expectations, context, motivation, and emotions influence our perception. There are two learning targets for this module. One, analyze the ways in which our expectations, context, motivation, and emotions influence our perceptions. And two, a rather interesting one, describe the claims of ESP, extrasensory perception, and discuss what most research psychologists have concluded after putting these claims to the test. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is this concept of perceptual set. What is perceptual set? Well, it's a mental predisposition to perceive one thing and not another. It's this idea that we sort of see what we expect to see. To see is to believe. Um, as we less fully appreciate, to believe is to see. Through experience, we come to expect certain results, and those expectations give us this perceptual set, which is, again, a set of mental tendencies and assumptions that affects that top-down processing. If you remember from the last module, we were talking about bottom-up versus top-down processing. Well, perceptual set is related to top-down processing. So how, and again, from the last module, we talked about the concept of priming. How does priming influence perceptual set? So if people are presented with this image right here on the left first, um, they initially, if they're presented with that one, they're more likely to see an old woman in the picture. So you can take a look at it and see what you think. And then, However, when people were initially viewed this image on the left, subject, they're more likely to see a young woman. Right? So the initial image sort of primes and helps create a perceptual set for what you're seeing. So let's look at this next example. What do you see here? Is it the number 13? Or is it B? <laughs> sort of depends on the context, right? What you're seeing. Um, you may have, I think when I first saw it, I thought, thought it was 13, but then my brain kept flipping back and forth, you know? And then when you see it listed as the way it is on the left, you definitely feel like it's a 13. But then when you see how it's put in the letter group, it definitely looks like a B. So our expectations and the context of, of the information really change what we're seeing, change our perception. So how is top-down processing, how does top-down processing influence perceptual set? So our experience with numbers and letters for this example, 13 comes between 12 and 14, so, and we know that, and B comes between A and C. So knowing those things, our prior experiences, our prior knowledge, really has an effect on what we're seeing. And this is a really simple example, but it happens in many domains of our lives. So again, how does context, context influence perceptual set? Reading from left to right, our expectations cause us to perceive the middle script differently than when it reading it from top to bottom. So the context of where the information is really has an influence on our perception. So let's look at this picture. What is on this woman's head? Where is the family? What are they doing? So cultural context actually has an effect on perceptual set. In one classic study, most rural East Africans questioned said that the woman was balancing a metal box on her head or a can on her head, a typical way that you carry water um, um, at that time when the survey was done in that location. They also perceived the family as sitting under a tree, whereas Westerners used to running water and box-like like houses with corners were more likely to perceive the family as being indoors. 
with the woman sitting under a window, which is exactly what I saw. <laughs> I no way thought it was under a tree with someone with something on her head. But I, like when I really think about it, I could see that. Um, depending on you know what you're used to, you're going to see something different. Our cultural context has an effect on our perceptual set. And this study was done back in the 1970s. So again, Westerners um, who are used to something different perceived it very differently than the people from East Africa. So here's a little comprehension check. On a warm summer day, Kimberly tells her brother to put on a suit. Kimberly's brother knows to put on a swimsuit instead of a business suit because of, hmm, is it clairvoyance? No, <laughs> it's not clairvoyance. It's context. What a context is really helps with um, aid in our perception. So what does research show about how motivation can influence our perceptual set? So desirable objects, such as a water bottle viewed by a thirsty person, can seem closer than they really are. Um, a tubey climbed hill can seem steeper when we're carrying a heavy backpack. I just had this happen to me a few weeks ago when we were hiking near Lake Tahoe. Um, and it just seemed so steep compared to what I remembered it being before because I was carrying a very heavy backpack with lots of water in it. And a walking destination can seem further away when we're feeling really tired. Right? So our motivation has an effect on what we're perceiving. Going on a diet can lighten our biological backpack. When heavy people lose weight, hills and stairs no longer seem so steep, according to some studies. What about emotion? How, how does emotion influence our perception, our perceptual set? When angry, people are more often, often perceive neutral objects such as guns. So what our emotional um, state is can have an effect on what we're actually perceiving. Scary stuff, right? Um, you can imagine how if you're frightened or um, in, in your thinking that someone is coming after you with a gun when it's actually, you know, they're holding a toy or something in their hand. It can, that can be a really scary time. We need to understand that our emotional state can have an influence on what we're perceiving. Hearing sad music can predispose people to perceive a sad meaning in words um, that sound alike. Mourning rather than mourning, die rather than die, pain rather than pain. Some interesting research there. When we're mildly upset by subliminal exposure um, to a scowling face, people have been shown to perceive a neutral face as less attractive and less likable. Again, our emotions are interfering with our perception. So switching to the second learning target next, what is the idea of parapsychology and ESP? Well, parapsychology is the study of paranormal phenomena, including ESP and psychokinesis, which is the ability of the mind to move objects. ESP is extrasensory perception. Um, the controversial claim that awareness can occur apart from sensory input and includes such things as telepathy, mind-to-mind -mind communication, clairvoyance, being able to see remote events, and precognition, seeing the future. There's been some movies, lots of movies on these different ideas. <laughs> How have researchers tried to test ESP claims? So in one study, psychologists created a mind machine, which I'm gonna show you a picture of in the next slide, to see if people could influence or predict a coin toss. Using a touch sensitive screen, visitors to British festivals were given four attempts to call heads or tails, playing against a computer that kept score. When the experiment ended, nearly 28 thousand people had predicted over 110,000 tosses with about a 50% correct rate. So basically chance. And here's a picture of what the mind machine looked like. So what does that tell us? Um, the results of most all of the studies that have been done tell us that researchers have been unable to replicate ESP claims under con controlled conditions. There's not a lot of evidence for those things. So as I said, this is a really short module and we're already to the end. And so we're gonna review the, the first learning target and then the second one. The first learning target was analyze the ways in which our expectations, context, motivation, and emotions influence our perceptions. 
the idea of perceptual set um, is defined as a mental predisposition that functions as a lens through which we perceive the world. Our learned concepts noted, can be noted as schemas kind of prime us to organize and interpret ambiguous stimuli in certain ways. Remember the picture of the old woman versus the young woman? Um, what we see first primes us to what we um, are expecting to see and what we actually see. Our motivation, as well as our physical and emotional context, remember the cultural context and what our motivation is and how we're feeling at the moment, can create expectations and color our interpretation of events and behaviors. So the second learning target was be able to describe the claims of ESP and discuss what most research psychologists have concluded after putting these claims to the test. Again, to define parapsychology, it's a study of paranormal phenomena, including ESP, tele which is telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition, and psychokinesis. Skeptics argue that to believe in ESP, you must believe the brain is capable of perceiving without sensory input. Researchers have been unable to re replicate ESP phenomena under controlled conditions. We are already to the end of this very short module. So thank you for listening. Take care.